are obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Well, hey, it's Connie Fife, the unstoppable diva. I'm also the founder of the Talent Concierge, the, the very well-known Talent Concierge around the globe. And today you are here listening to the Connie Fife Show. And remember, we want y'all sharing this video. We want to let folks know what we're doing and the incredible guests that we bring on to our show. Because every week we have some amazing guests. We have some amazing giveaways. And just like today, our guest has an amazing giveaway for you. And I'm going to share that with you in just a little bit. But make sure that you're sharing so you can get your hands on those giveaways. So remember, share, share, share. So again, we bring everybody here every week. We bring our guests here because they are sharing with you the skills the business necessities that you need to scale your business, whether it's from a nonprofit, an association, a corporation, or even education, we are bringing you the tools and the tips and that secret sauce so you can scale your business and keep moving on up or moving on out. That's what we like to do. And that's what we like to share. So our guest today, we're going to be talking about how to turn that moment into a movement. And, and I just, I love that because if you're, if you're all on me, uh, I'm an activist for, for several organizations, cancer, fighting cancer, and also an activist for Beyond Me Too. But this gal, she, she's, um, she believes that leaders turn moments into movements. Throughout her career, her accomplished career as a broadcast journalist, a press secretary for a U.S. Senate candidate, a philanthropist, a lobbyist, and the nonprofit executive, she has turned public and community service into an art form that has positivity positively impacted millions of lives. And she continues her work as a lobbyist for a nonprofit even today. And she is sharing today her fire starter formula to help you turn those moments into movements. And welcome to the show, Terry Williams. Terry, Terry Brassard Williams, am I saying that correctly? I am from Louisiana, where vowels are different from every other part of the country. So it's yeah. Broussard. Broussard. And I should know that being from Louisville, Kentucky myself. Um, <laughs> I guess I've been out of there far, far removed. But I always say you can't take the country out of the gal. But you, your, your background, and again, I, I so could relate to this again myself, being an executive of nonprofits over the years and also... Uh, the lobbying work that I've done and, uh, and the development work that I've even done at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. So, but you talk about turning those moments into movements. So explain that a little bit more so our listeners understand what it is that you're talking about. Absolutely. And Connie, I have to say thank you for including me and part of your family. The work that you have done inspires me. And so it's exciting to share a little bit of my world with, with your viewers and listeners. So I come from a family that um, they're just incredible humans that are built with faith and fortitude. And my grandparents, as well as my parents, have all been um servant leaders with just true hearts of gold. Mm -hmm. And so from an early age, I remember volunteering with my mother and father and even my grandparents. Um, and so I often tell the story about how I knew that you can turn a moment into a movement and it starts with my, my family. And so my grandparents lived in a part of Louisiana in Lafayette where they had to drive to go to church. Mm -hmm. But so many families um, that live near them 
didn't have cars. So they were walking, you know, in the heat and we have hurricanes and not snow in Louisiana. Um, (laughs) But they had a walk just to sing a tune on Sunday. Mm. And so they turned a moment into a movement by building a church. And, And there was a place for many to worship. And then about a month after I got engaged, that church burned down. Oh. Now, my family will say it was all my fault, right? I'd finally gotten engaged to a <laughs> Texas boy. That's why. And, and, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so my parents stepped up to turn that moment into a movement to rebuild the church from nice. overseeing the finances to leading the capital campaign. And my father was at the top of it all. Mm. And around that time, he got ill. Um, and shortly after we we celebrated the grand opening of the church and had a, a grand blessing, mm-hmm. he passed away and we oh. buried him in that church. Okay. And so that legacy and that movement continues today for the, the many people that walk through those doors. And so when I, I look towards my own experiences, both professionally and personally um, through community service, there are moments. So very many moments that have mm-hmm. turned into movements. Wow. Wow. I always talk about that when there's a need and you just put it in such a special, a special way. And my, my husband, and I just had this conversation the, the other day where he works at and he was talking about um, some pieces of equipment. And he's like, I cannot believe there is nowhere that I could find this piece of equipment. And I said, well, there's a need, create it. And there's so much of that out there, but I, I love how you you come across with that so much from the heart, and you're sharing that, and you're also you're also working towards that, and you talk about those fire starters uh, that that really cause that movement to happen, but that fire starter that really happens within side of us, and I could hear you sharing that when the church burned down. Um, that your father, your parents, you know, they really stepped up to, you know, lead that movement, lead that, lead that charge because the church needed something. I never expected you to say church. When you, when you were saying, that, when you were saying people were walking and thinking, oh, well, they got a bus. You know? <laughs> I mean, you went even larger. Uh, as a friend of mine always says, think big and act bigger. Are you an even larger than that? Your family just said, no, we're not getting a buzz. We're going to build a church. <laughs> like, How much more community impact can you get than that? Yeah. And like you said, definitely from the heart. I have learned that, you know, fire starters are people that see something that others ignore. And they do mm-hmm. something about it, big or small. So it can be, you know, as as little as starting a movement at a Starbucks, right? You you drive through the Starbucks, you pay for that drink for the person behind you and that contagion begins. And you've started a movement that day Mm -hmm. and that came from your heart. Or it could be something as big as making sure that a community has a place to worship and meet and to something to be proud of. Right. So what are, what are some of the other things with people and you know, leading with fortitude, leading with grace. And you mentioned servant leadership. And I, um, a true believer in servant leadership, I, I always say to people, I, I could work with people from the janitor to the boardroom. Everyone, right. everyone to me is the same. I, even when I worked at the U.S. Chamber and some of the people that I was meeting with, you know, everybody would be like, oh my, I, oh my God, I can't believe like you're meeting these, you know, Norman Lear, you know, big movie producer, or uh, Donald Trump at the time, and they'd say, how can you do that? How can you hold yourself together? And I would say, you know what? We all put our pants on the same way in the morning. And it doesn't matter who that person is. I just want to know that I'm serving them the best that I can. And that's exactly what the, the, the representation that your family and that you're doing is leading with that fortitude, leading with that grace. And so, I mean, that fire starter formula. So how, we, how do you help people embrace that within themselves so they can find, you know, what that is that is missing and build on that? Yes, it's such a great question. And so I have a blog 
which I call movementmakertribe.com. Um, and I share many ways that people are starting movements from within the business space. Um, I've told a story about a young couple who decided to start um, just a gift box shop within the heart of Detroit, which, you know, is an area that really needed to be rebuilt at one point of, of the last decade. Um, and they are young and they're just building that space in their own community. Mm. But I've also told the story of um, a young man named Antonio Brown, whose mother was formerly incarcerated, was was out of jail and was looking Mm -hmm. simply for a place to live, but could not find a place to live. Mm. And his mother, Sherry, was a fighter. She was someone that really had learned her lesson and wanted to turn her life around. Well, Antonio actually was sworn in today as a city council member for the city of Atlanta. And is the the first ever, or at this time, I should say, openly um, gay person on council. And and so he found that fire as he was helping others. And that that led him wanting to have um, a life of public Mm. service. And, And so there you can find those type of stories or, or even the stories of people that are starting nonprofits. But in, in each of those lessons, I try to break it down to what did it mm-hmm. take to build that movement, big or small. Um, but, but I learn from each, each time I tell these stories, really, you have to have a cause. Um, you have to know what is that why right? and why you've fallen in love with it and why it's important to you and your community. And then you really have to um, connect with people mm-hmm. and build out that community of people that can help you um, right. get it started. Right. And then once you've connected mm-hmm. and you've communicated, that would be the third step is to communicate with the public. Um, people will start to join your movement and they will want to be a part of something that is bigger than themselves. Yes. Um, and those people that you're communicating with, of course, you want them to have the same core values and to say have the same energy and desire for that right. change because the change is the, the hard part where the work begins yes. and so change is really that that last step um of, of when you do the work mm-hmm. to create it so i take people through those four four c's and the the fire starter formula the things that are needed inside that movement within that right. um is center of it all to mm-hmm. have a successful movement um through my blog and, and different ways that I, I help them. Nice. So I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a minute because I still I still get phone calls because I was in the nonprofit sector for so many years from the you know the chambers to the Girl Scouts. So I, I did a lot of consulting in the nonprofit area for a couple of years when I first started my own business. So I did this program once. And the program was about people wanting to start their nonprofit. And this, this one gal, she kept talking to me and we followed up. We had a, a, numerous conversations about it and she did see a need. However, there were other groups doing the same thing that she wanted to be doing. And her struggle was starting that nonprofit, going through that whole process. But then it turned into, it was almost as if she was competing with these other groups. So my suggestion to her, why start a new nonprofit? Since you already have two other groups in your small community, go to them, pull them together, rally them together and start one larger group. And that's actually what they ended up doing. And it's even been better for her because she's, you know, she's a mom and she has children and she still has her own company and business. So now that they rallied and pulled this all together, the folks from the other groups, they're actually more hands on. And it actually turned out to be the right thing to do. So I always, I always talk to people when they say they want to start a nonprofit to say, well, let's talk about the reason why. Let's talk about, let's evaluate and see if there's someone else in your community already doing this. In the case of your parents, there was no, clearly no church in your community. So, I mean, that really was a need there that they found that they stepped forward to take. But I do cautious everyone because, and you could probably agree with me, uh, Terry, that there are so many nonprofits. So just make sure the reason is right. Just like 
just like you've been sharing, make sure it is coming from the heart. You know, be certain it is coming from from within and that there is that need out there in the community. Because what I found is when we have all of these different pockets doing the same thing, the dollars become less. So I always look at it from that strategic point of view, saying, okay, and we, and we had this once when I was a Girl Scouts in Pennsylvania and other councils were all going after the same organization for money. And they came back to us and they said, you know what, we're not going to give to each of you. But if you come to us with one project, then we will fund you. Right. Yeah. And you started off by saying you're playing devil's advocate, but I, yeah. I think we're speaking from the same playbook. Okay. Um, and, and so in that example, you're talking about nonprofits. Yes. I think that everyone is a leader that can start a movement. Oh, yes. And, and so mm. there might be a larger movement in a community, right? Right. And so even if we use your nonprofit example, mm-hmm. um, nonprofits need many movements from yes. within. Right. So we, we take, um, we take a, a moment like Girl Scouts. So right now there are many Girl Scout um, units and right. Girl Scout chapters that are in jeopardy of losing members because yes. the Boy Scouts are now admitting um, girls into their ranks. Right. So this is a great opportunity for someone who cares mm-hmm. about girls and leadership to right. step up and say, what yes. can I do to help the Girl Scouts become more strategic? Right. So they might start an area in the Girl Scouts, um, such as STEM, if um, a unit doesn't have a STEM program, but right. a Boy Scout you know, does, right. they might help them amplify that voice from within. Mm-hmm. Um, or they, they might encourage them to go into an area where they, they haven't been before. Mm-hmm. Here in Central Texas, they've taken troops beyond bars. So they look mm-hmm. for ways to build a special bond for girls whose mothers might be incarcerated yeah. and they, they can't have, um, have a troop. And so they call those community troops. Right. And so if you are the leader of that community troop, you were a leader that took that moment and turned it into a movement. Right. Um, so movements don't have to be starting a brand new nonprofit. Right. It can right. be amplifying the ones that exist. I mean, that is perfect, perfect. And that that is a movement maker. Like you said, there could be yeah. that existing organization, but there is still a need. And I would say probably 99.9% of all nonprofits need a movement maker. <laughs> <laughs> There's always yes, and, and just organizations all around, you know. Right. So um, again, on my blog, I don't just highlight nonprofits, but I highlight okay. you know people that are doing some things big and small and daring in their community. Right. Um, you know, might be starting a business. Or today, I just um, highlighted one for Earth Day, a salon oh, in okay. Boise, Idaho, that now takes the foils from your hair and they recycle right. it. But they're the first of their kind in their city to do that. Oh, wow. They started a movement. That is definitely, I didn't even hear about that one, but yeah, definitely. I know I get those foils every month. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to tell my hairdresser that. Um, but yeah, but taking that, but taking that from the heart. I do need to take a really quick break. We'll be right back. And then it'll be time for a straight talk. Hang in there. We'll be right back. <laughs> The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find The Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C-Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play. Apple, Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConnieFifeShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. OMG, we're back, and I'm Connie Fife, and you're listening to the Connie Fife Show. Our unstoppable guest today is Terry, and I'm going to say again, Ter- Terry Bruzard. Bruzard. Broussard. Broussard. Yes. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Yes, yes, yes. Terry, 
Terry Broussard Williams, and she is sharing how you can turn a movement or a moment into a movement. And there's so many opportunities out there to do that from nonprofit to profit to just starting something and, and just moving something forward where you see that need. Now, something people don't know about Terry is Terry, you, you don't hear out of your left ear. I guess I just that's right. Or you don't yes. see out of your left. Now, was that caused by accident or birth? When or? I was when I was young, um, young and learning how to walk, uh, I fell into a coffee table and damaged my nerves. And so, um, um, for all of my life, I have not had a left ear or a left eye. Um, but it's definitely something I, I talk a lot. Um, on my social media, my blog about faith and fortitude. And so, you know, when I think of what it takes to keep you from not excelling or moving something forward, as you highlighted earlier, um, it's definitely fortitude. So it hasn't been something that I've allowed to hinder me. Wow. I mean, that was incredible. When I seen that, I was like, wow, I, I was just in, in, in awe of you, even at that point that you, again, you, you don't let it hinder you. You just keep moving, moving through that. So now it's time for some straight talk. So Terry, if you could finish this sentence for me, I am unstoppable because. Ooh, because I am fearless and I'm determined to increase the good around me. I love that. I love that. So what, so what is your process? I know so many opportunities have to be coming your way. So what is your process for evaluating opportunities? Oh, this is something that resonates with me right now. Um, you know, we've been talking about the Girl Scouts and, yeah. and just recently um, the Central Texas um, board asked me to join its ranks. And so okay. this is real time, straight talk. Um, <laughs> you know, I was a 12 year scout and have the honor of um, being a part of their roster of women of distinction. Okay. But um, when you think about board service or being a movement maker, you really have to think about where you are in your life. Mm. And do you have the the time um, to give, you know, do you have the skills that they need um, as a board to help them succeed? And, you know, do you have the treasure just to put that forward? Mm. Um, And so I have tools on my blog, actually, a movementmakertribe.com that you can download um, that are mapped and evaluation tools that can help you determine if whatever comes before you, a committee opportunity, a um, nonprofit board opportunity, or even starting your own movement, if it's right for you. So I've been going through that process to to think about, is this right for me and right now? And I think they just got a new CEO for Central Florida or Central Texas, oh, rather. Texas. That yes. is right. An right. amazing, um, dedicated woman. Yeah. Um, because yeah. out of out of this region, Hill is the current CEO. Um, so they have this just this rich history and legacy. Right, right, right. Because yours, because um, I still keep track of who's going where. <laughs> and I think your Central Texas, she just went to uh, Charleston. Or um, national. Yes. The National Girl Scout Office. Right. National Girl Scout Office. Right. And then the other, your neighboring one, she's the one that went to Charleston. So a couple of your CEOs in Texas have been moving. And that's what I, that's what I knew of. That's what I was aware of. Um, So interesting. Well, Well, the only advice I can give you once you determine what you can offer, which I believe is tremendous, or else I wouldn't be asking you. It, it will be very rich for you. Uh, That's to right. Be part of the organization, and and once you're there, they say that you start bleeding green. Um, <laughs> I think I still bleed green. <laughs> I, I was definitely see that. Yeah, I was on the board for many, many years before I became a CEO. So yeah, I definitely. Oh, yeah, and then I'm, I spent twelve years. That was my last uh, corporate corporate gig. So yeah, I love I loved every minute of it. I really did. So um, the next the next uh, straight talk we have is never have I ever. Ooh. This one is going to sound like it's impossible, but never have I ever given up. Um, okay. When I, I, first of all, I one core value or root belief I have is that there is always 
always a way. Yes. There's always a way to make something happen. Yes. Um, and when I, I think about just my family and my grandparents, you know, who their parents picked cotton and mm-hmm. they did not finish high school um, right. and they lived a good life um, and they always figured it out. Right. I, I use that as inspiration. Um, but I also believe that, you know, I have to uphold that, that family value and that standard. Mm-hmm. And so um, even at times where, you know, men in the, the marble halls of state capitals have right. gum in my handbag or have told me I couldn't pass a law, I, right. I've never given up. It's forced me to double down. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I love that. And, I, and we can go into a totally different conversation there, <laughs> uh, especially being a lobbyist. But like you said, double down. And um, I think that's been part of my my fortitude or where I was given the name uh, Unstoppable because if I seen something that wasn't going, again, especially working at the U.S. Chamber, it was like, no, we're going to work double down and we're going to take it to where we need it to go. And it makes you work harder. I know for me it did. It just makes you work even harder for what it is that you want. So, so what's next? Where do you go from here, Terry? I am just a person that will probably always be involved in too much <laughs> um, <laughs> and serving my community. <laughs> You know, I have just the honor um, for the rest of this year to serve as a teaching fellow at the University of Pennsylvania, um, working on social impact strategy. And it has been so wonderful. And um, it's not only helped me, you know, my my day job as a nonprofit lobbyist, but it's also really allowed me to see things differently in my writing my blog. Um, and in coaching the people that, that I do, um, my, oh, everyone has a side hustle these days oh, yeah. and my, <laughs> and <laughs> mine is coaching others and helping them with their, their strategic planning, um, projects. Nice. So I will continue to do that. And along the way, learn from incredible and unstoppable people like you. So are you doing that virtually or are you in Philadelphia? Um, most of it is virtually, okay. and we do okay. go a couple of times a year to, to Philly, which I've grown to love. Okay. Oh, I love Philly. As you know, <laughs> came here by way of Pennsylvania, so love Philly. Yes. Yeah. That's just an awesome, awesome town there. Um, so, well, well, also you have a giveaway. So talk about your giveaway uh, and also let people know how they could find you. Oh, yeah. Yes. This is the fun part. This is fun so part. I, <laughs> I truly believe that leaders can turn moments into movements. And so, you know, my blog focuses a lot on philanthropy, as we've been talking about, and politics and um, movement building, also that movement from within. But I say all the time, people complain about Nancy Pelosi or when Paul Ryan was in power. You know, right? Paul Ryan was, was also the, the person they complain about. But really, we have the power to create the change that we want to see. Right. So I love to say, I'm the speaker of my house. And so I would love to give away to your listeners and viewers um, some of my speaker of my house swag, some mugs and shirts, and all kinds of things that will remind them that they, they have the power to turn moments into movements. I know. I went on your website. I was like, oh, this is way cool. So <laughs> Oh, these are really cool. So we'll have to talk about what we can get here autographed so we can. Oh, fun. I've never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to get a marker or do those mugs or that T-shirt. Yes. Yeah, some autographed pieces. And yeah, that's what we love. We love those autographed pieces. And then we get them out to everybody. So thank you for being here, Terry. I yes. love the work that you are doing. And I'm just I'm proud to have you on the show. I really, truly am. Well, well, thank you. I actually, I have not said this out loud to anyone yet, but um, late May, I am going to be launching Movement Maker TV. So you can find oh, cool. some videos um, on all of my social media okay. handles, which is Terry B. Williams. So terrybwilliams.com, Terry right. B. Williams on Instagram, Twitter, and Movement Maker Tribe on Facebook. Wow, I love that. Movement Maker TV. I love that. I love that. So are you going around to different places interviewing people? How are you doing that? I um, launched the first season right here in Austin with some movement makers that I love. And I interviewed some activists, um, someone from the mayor's office. 
someone who works at a community foundation, okay. um, someone who fundraises, just lobbyists, just amazing people right here in Austin. Wow, I love that. That would be so cool. I can't wait to see that. So we're definitely yes, sure. I would definitely. Yeah, that we include that information in our when we push the, the show out. I love that. I love that. Well, again, thanks for being here. And that's all we have for today. I would love to keep talking to you, um, but we're just running out of time. And I, my production team will be like, you talk too long again. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just have to leave it there. We'll close it there. And that's all we have for today. I love our tribe. I love our family, our members. And thank you for continuing to follow us each week. And remember to share so we can get you some of those autographed mugs from Terry B. Williams. I'm Connie Fife, a recovering C-suite executive CEO myself. And But we are here. We are moving ideas forward. And we are keeping the passion of life activated. And if you want to be seen and heard, you need to be advertising on The Connie Five Show. Just visit theconnie5show.com for details. Now, a quick word from our sponsors. This week, we have a sponsor is from the ladies who are better known as Jade and Winona, the And We Thought Ladies. They're the publishers of the 25 hottest authors, artists, and advocates. And their latest publication has me as their centerfold. And they're also doing a documentary coming out um, shortly within the next couple of months. And I will also be featured in their documentary as well. So make sure you want to grab yourself a copy of the magazine and head over to andwethought.com to grab your copy. And again, as I mentioned, I am the founder and of the Talent Concierge Agency. And if you don't know what that's about, just head on over to talentconcierge.co, where we are representing successful, successful career leaders who are really finding themselves at a crossroad and they're looking to scale their business to become a speaker, an author, or maybe even a podcaster or a, or a TV host. But check it out and go on over to the website, talentconcierge.co, and schedule your free discovery session. It's free to learn and see if you qualify to be represented by the agency. The, the Talent Concierge Agency represents the world's most daring minds who are keeping the passion of life activated. I'm going to leave you with this simple, simple thought for this week. Eventually, all pieces fall into place. Until then, laugh at the confusion, live for the moment, and know that everything happens for a reason. And that is author unknown. You're listening to The Connie Fife Show. And remember, like us, share us, and also subscribe with us on iTunes. And until next time, just keep on rocking it, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey y'all, it's Connie Fife. Thank you for listening to the Connie Fife Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to the ConnieFiveShow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week, activate your power, and be unstoppable together.